So earlier in the week, I posted a video describing some of the things that I feel Nike basketball has kind of fallen short of in recent years, and really over the entire history of the LeBron James line. I'll link that video in the description because I think you should listen to it first to kind of gain better context in what I'm going to talk about today because that video went through the entire history of this and I'm not going to take that much time today. This video is about something that happened this week and it kind of just prompted this whole uh, this whole discussion with me and some of my friends and I want to kind of bring that to this platform. So that description or that, that video is in the description below. So this video is an open letter to Jason Petrie. Now, Jason Petrie is the lead designer of the Nike LeBron line. He's been with LeBron for, I think, close to 15 years now. Uh, he started with a LeBron 7. That is probably one of the best <laughs> uh, Nike basketball silhouettes of all time. And he followed it up with a LeBron 8, the LeBron 9, the LeBron 10. One of the most incredible design runs in Nike history, in my opinion. And he's still going to this day. So... First and foremost, before we dive into this, I want to tell you a story about Jason. So when I was in college, I began collecting LeBron PEs and samples, and I was working three jobs uh, during the summer to, you know, just get money for shoes pretty much. That's uh, one of my biggest passions in life at that point. And uh, I'm sure Jason probably doesn't remember this. Maybe he does. One particular week, I finally crossed off one of my all-time grails. It was the LeBron 7 Kentucky PE. I have a lot of stories about that shoe. Maybe we'll talk about it another day. Uh, I had a lot of personal connections to that shoe, so I really uh, felt some se some sense of validation when I finally was able to get that one on my feet. And uh, one on that day, I, on a whim, decided to DM Jason on Instagram, and I thanked him for the LeBron 7 because, to me, you know, you always hear people talk about, you know, what shoes mean to them, what shoe they were wearing in certain aspects of their life. To me, that was a LeBron 7. You know, that was a shoe that had so much history for me. It can be probably traced back to the defining shoe of my entire uh, collecting career, if you want to call it that. You know, when the first colorway came out, I saved every bit of money I could working at Walmart to get that shoe. Uh, I grabbed the 7 PS, all kinds of stuff. So there's so many stories, uh, stories about the LeBron 7, and maybe one day we'll talk about it here on this channel. But anyway, Jason was nice enough to respond and thank me for the message. Uh, he said, you know, thank you. You know, the, the line is just as much inspired by the people that wear the shoes as LeBron himself. And, uh, you know, as a collector, that message meant a lot to me because it's like he understood where I was coming from as a collector. He understood what shoes can represent, you know, the life you can live in these shoes when they're worn. And, you know, of course, all the great stuff LeBron was doing on the court in them, too. So, well, let's fast forward a few years and let's fast forward to this week. And I feel like the collector has somewhat been forgotten about in recent years. Now, uh, I know it's easy to just listen to complaints, and, you know, uh, I'm sure, you know, designing something of this magnitude, you're always going to get that kind of split reaction, but before I dive into this, I want to say this. I speak on this because I care about it. I post this kind of stuff because I want to engage with the line and offer ways to reach consumers that have spent a great deal of time collecting and investing in this line for 20 plus years, right? Or nearly 20 years. This is the 20th uh, shoe about to come out. And we care, and we want to see it thrive. We want to see it be great. And uh, the Regal Pink LeBron 9 came out today. I stand by my earlier video that the idea was solid, but the execution was not great in deciding to put this on the LeBron 9. Well, uh, this week, Sneakers dropped an interview with Jason. Uh, it was kind of like a uh, walkthrough of the LeBron 9 legacy and the history of the shoe. Uh, amongst a lot of things said, there were a few things that were said and done that I kind of feel demonstrate my point from the previous video, as well as a few things in the video that I think probably frustrated some fans. I saw some things posted on the LeBron Marketplace and on Instagram on a few different accounts that kind of made reference to this, and I agreed with it. Um, I, I think some of the stuff just kind of shows to me, uh, you know, the perspective that this entire team is completely disconnected from the consumer that is buying the product. And uh, like I said, Maybe they're not aware of how the consumer feels, but I feel like if it takes talking about it, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But Jason talks about the legacy of the LeBron 9, and he talks about it being the shoe that LeBron wore in his first NBA championship run, the way it kind of brought color to the line because, you know, at the time, most shoes were red, black, white, or team color. Uh, you know, of course, you know, there's, there's exemptions before the LeBron 9. You know, you had the South Beach LeBron 8, the Sprites. So many different things that, that came before it. But, you know, the 9 was really where things kind of took off. Um, it it kind of became an all-time boundary-breaking tech shoe. Solidified its place in sneaker history. 
He also talked about how colorways like the Regal Pink are a way to kind of adapt the LeBron 9 to a new generation of fans. Jason even mentioned that this new shoe was a new iconic colorway with an L.A. vibe for LeBron. And, you know, I'm I'm appreciative of all those things. I, I'm not, uh, you know, mute to all those things. But let's talk about not only what Jason was saying in the interview. Let's talk about what he was wearing. So he was not wearing the Regal Pink LeBron 9. He was wearing the Statue of Liberty MVP Elite 9 sample. And in the background, the following colorways were shown in the video. There was the Black History Month 9. There was the MVP 9. The China 9, of course, the Galaxy All-Star Retro that we just got. I think that might have been an original pair in the video. Uh, and then, of course, the All Red Finals MVP Elite. Now, real quickly, before I dive into this stuff, I want to just comment on that really quick. So, that Finals MVP Elite, along with the MVP 9, no casual fan or even committed fan outside of Miami had a chance of getting that pack. That shoe resold for nearly triple or even beyond... Uh, maybe five to six times retail at one point. I remember people listing that pack for, gosh, five, six thousand dollars at one point. I mean, there was a lot of resale on that pack. It was just unattainable, you know, for fans to get. And I remember there being videos at the time back in 2012 when people were talking about, you know, Michael Jordan fans are able to access the infrared six, you know, Michael Jordan's first championship shoe. And yes, you know, LeBron fans, in all fairness, were able to get the white Elite 9 that he wore in the championship clincher. But then you release this championship pack, and nobody has a chance to get it. So anyways, we'll, we'll move on. Now, also in fairness, we did get the Galaxy LeBron 9 this year. And I'm not asking for a China 9 or, uh, you know, another re-release of this pack right now. But I want to point out something. So for this new colorway to be an iconic colorway... We live in an era where literally everything sells out. That is the climate of the sneaker world right now. Limited quantities, resell, bulk resell, all that stuff. The Watch the Throne 9 retro sold out. The Galaxy retro sold out. And then you have pairs like the South Coast and the Regal Pink. And let's talk about those. So as of 7 p.m. on release day, the following sizes are still available in the Regal Pink. 7, 7 and a half, 8, Eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten, ten and a half, eleven, eleven and a half, twelve, twelve and a half, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. The only size that was sold out was the size sixteen, which, to be fair, that probably you know was in extremely limited quantities. And uh, you know, I also know that there was a lot of people complaining about the retail price of two hundred and thirty dollars. That's sixty dollars higher than the original price back in two thousand eleven and twelve. You know, but to be fair, there's been a lot of inflation since then, and there's been premium material prices and all that kind of stuff. Regardless, in an era where everything sells out, you're seeing pairs like this that are being marketed as the future of the LeBron line sitting and sitting hard. And I would venture to say some of the LeBron fan base are some of the more committed uh, fans that buy just about everything when LeBron stuff comes out. And you're seeing some of those hardcore collectors buy less and less of this stuff. And so in this kind of situation, if I could ask Jason one question, it would be why does the design team insist on continuing this trend of putting out these pairs when countless classics that we've never had a chance to get, you know, PEs, uh, classic colorways, quick strikes, elites, all this kind of stuff that people clamored for for years. Why is it they insist on wasting these releases on stuff like this Instead of just listening to the public, I mean, read the forums, the social media posts. You know, fans are trying to communicate what they feel. And, you know, on LeBron Marketplace, you know, I'm an admin in that group. And here are some of the comments that I, I literally read today. I, I pulled these from the group. Someone said, bring back colorways that your fans loved. The nine was dope and all they've dropped are two hits and two duds. Someone else said, man, just put the nine back on Nike ID or Nike by you. That would be love. We can make our own shoe. Another member said, this would have been a nice shoe, but they throw the brown shag carpet on it from the 70s. Uh, another person said, I hate when they drop stuff like this. They have to know it's going straight to the outlets. Here's the last two that I really wanted to point out. Someone said, Nike and LeBron are so stubborn at this point that I am perfectly fine with them tanking miserably. And the last one that I'm going to share, another member said, nobody wants these. We're still waiting on the playoffs PE that we voted on a year ago. Look, I'm not one of those people that wants just straight PE retros. I understand that lines have to progress. New ideas have to be tried. 
new generations have to adapt. I get all that. You know, there's there's how many colorways of the Air Jordan 11 or the Air Jordan 6? You know, you can't release the same colorway over and over again. But for a line that is literally, you know, experimenting with retros for the first time, and they're kind of getting into the groove of retros, they marketed all the things that we could not have 10 years ago. And now with this first line of retros, we're still continuing to get that kind of attitude. Now, granted, I'm going to be totally fair in this. We've gotten some great stuff. The Watch the Throne 9 was great. The Galaxy Big Bang 9, that's a shoe everybody loves. But why stop there? You know, like this shoe that came out today is not terrible. It's actually a pretty good attempt at getting creative and telling a story with that theme park tagline. But it's just not what the people have waited 10 years on a retro line for. We're okay with new colorways. That's life. I mean, look at the Hardwood Classic uh, LeBron 8. They turned into a Lakers 8. That was a big shoe. But, or even the, the Media Day, LeBron 7, the Lakers pair. Everybody loved that shoe. But when you talk about the legacy of a shoe, and not one person in the video is wearing this new colorway, but instead they've got these PEs and samples that most people will never be able to wear. Either, either it's way too expensive on the aftermarket, or it's just not available. And let's be real about it. Some of these shoes are turning 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. They have a limited window on how long they can be worn before they start to kind of, you know, disintegrate. And so, to me, when I see videos like the one Nike put out, and they're talking about this new colorway while kind of just taunting all of these uh, unattainable shoes in, in the entire background, that it, it just kind of sends this message that they're telling the consumer, hey, you just can't have the special stuff that, you know, we get to have. You know, and that, that just drives me crazy as a fan. You know, Jason, Nike, I am begging you to begin a dialogue with fans and not just the casuals. I mean, this was hilarious. Sneakers put up a poll about the LeBron 9 this week, and it was asking, you know, when did LeBron wear the 9 win in the championship? And I think it was almost 40% said that he did that in 2009. <laughs> you know, like, man, connect with the longtime fans. Like, these people have dropped 200 dollars at retail for over a decade. I know people that have spent tens and I would even probably say hundreds of thousands of dollars on this line over the last 20 years. And they feel distant and they feel disconnected because they feel like, okay, I've waited for the retros to come, hoping that maybe one day I would get a chance to get some of these shoes. And now we're getting this kind of stuff. You know, it's like, it's the constant frustration. And, you know, the line itself has done a hit or miss job over that in the last few years. You know, on again and off again, LeBron watch campaigns. They, they put out a poll where, you know, the winning shoe, the ring ceremony, LeBron 10, no surprise there, a shoe LeBron wore that we weren't allowed to have. We haven't had an update in that in over a year. I mean, you're seeing the main signature line have a shrinking retail presence in, in malls and at retail. And I get that's probably the shoe industry as a whole, but I mean, to me, you, you can clearly see that in the LeBron line. You know, you see way more Yana shoes or Kyrie shoes or KD shoes out. You don't really see the uh, the LeBron line represented well at most stores. And, you know, it, most of the li the main line has had a very limited variety of releases. The colorways are generic at best. And they don't, they don't tell the story of LeBron or the evolution of this entire line for the last 20 years. I mean, it's just basic. You know, it, it seems very uninspired. And so, listen, I'm not trying to make a big complaining video. I feel like that's all I've been doing for the last week is just complaining. Uh, and, you know, I, I say this kind of stuff because I care about it. You know, I want to see this stuff be great. And, like, listen, man, we all want this to be great. You know, fans that have followed LeBron and this entire line for 20 years, we don't want to see the last few great years of LeBron's career be played with this disconnect and, and really, at times, a taunting attitude from what we're not allowed to have as collectors. You know, we continue to get these... Uh, these generic mainline releases, and we continue to get these, uh, you know, really weird retro selections, uh, like the Barcelona LeBron 9 Low. I, I don't understand that one. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. I want to say thank you for listening to this video. And look, hopefully, you know, we can start a dialogue about trying to get some communication going on this stuff. Because at the end of the day, we just all want to be able to celebrate this line and the 20 years that it's done. I mean, how many af athletes have had a 20-year-long signature line with Nike or any any shoe deal that has produced 20 consecutive uh, signature shoes. That's unbelievable. And so we want to see this line be great. We want to see it be, uh, you know, have a great legacy. But we also want to see the fans, you know, uh, be able to engage in that and be a part of that as well. So that's all I've got for today. Listen, if you want to connect with me, go to Instagram at 859 Approved. Uh, subscribe to the channel for more content. I've uh, loved all the DMs I've gotten from some of you guys just wanting to talk about this stuff. 
Uh, there was several different posts. They were kind of saying, like, finally someone is, is expressing what we all feel. So, you know, sound off in the comments. You know, let, let people uh, hear what you uh, feel about this topic. You know, I feel like sometimes I, I beat on this topic a lot, but it means a lot to me as a collector. So that's all i got for today. You know, connect with me on the socials and stay safe out here, guys. Uh, and we will be back really soon.